So I just found out about something pretty cool that I think you're going to find extremely useful and that is controlling Bluetooth devices from Google Chrome. So I thought for a demo of this I'd set up an Arduino here with one of those super cheap Bluetooth modules and we're going to talk to this from Google Chrome. So check this out. I've got a link here to the offline project which is also very useful. This works both offline and online. So this project could live locally here on my computer or build it into a website and then you know you can go to some website you have somewhere and uh, make a controller, a GUI, an interface, whatever you want. And uh, let's go ahead and open that up and there is my little GUI here. So first thing we're going to do is click connect and there's Kevin's Arduino. I'll go ahead and pair to that. The whole screen goes green. And we've got the LED on there, which turns red. We can click LED off, goes off, back on, off, on. We can click this right here, and that's our color picker. And I can just drag around in there, and you can see in real time, this LED is changing colors as I'm dragging that all through there. So it's also very fast. And also, it's two-way. So if I have a, I've got a little button here, I'll press that, and you see as I'm Clicking on that button, we see push button pressed there, flash at us. So again, extremely powerful. And this is the desktop version of Chrome, of course, on my Mac, but I believe it also works on the mobile version on an Android smartphone. So I don't have any of those handy, so I haven't been able to test it, but works great with the desktop version. And again, you can imagine all the things you can do in here. We can put text in there. We can have sliders, we can, you know, you've got all the buttons, a color picker, so you can, you can do a lot of cool stuff here. So let me show you how this all works. All right, and before I get into the details here, I'm just going to give you a quick high-level explanation as to how all of this works, because you might be able to just figure it out on your own without watching this crazy long video. So at the hardware side, we've got this HM10 module, which gives you that transparent UART uh, to the Arduino. So you've got the TX and RX pins, those correspond uh, to a Bluetooth characteristic that you can subscribe and write to from the Google Chrome app. So you've got a service with one characteristic and that's what's used to send and receive data and we'll, we'll get more into that in a second here. Then for the Google Chrome app, I wrote that in processing. And processing is kind of like very Arduino-like. It's easy to make GUIs and interfaces. I use it all the time. And it has a plugin for it, P5JS. So I installed that into processing, which then allows those processing sketches to run in a browser. So now you can, you know, make a website GUI, you know. And then on top of that, I installed the P5.BLE.JS library, which then gives you access to that Bluetooth control from within Google Chrome. And again, tons of examples, both on processing, P5.js, and this Bluetooth library. And that's the whole thing. So again, you could probably start working with these examples and build what you see here right now. But I'll go through the step-by-step -step process and walk through the code here now. So I think the easiest place to start is with the Arduino, and I'm just using, you know, this little board here that I designed. This is just basically an Arduino Mini, which is tied to the HM10. And this thing says here that it needs 3.6 to 6 volts, but I didn't really feel like having an external power supply here, which, by the way, its logic levels are 3.3 volts, so I would have needed, like, a logic translator circuit a separate power supply, it was going to get messy, so I just powered it from 3.3 volts, the logic levels are 3.3 volts, everything works fine, so that's good. So it's a 4-pin device, so you see you've got RX, TX, ground, and VCC, so RX is, that's the direction into this device, TX is the output from this device, and if we go over to the code here, you see that I'm using the software serial library, and I kind of wrote out the pins here to show that direction. So the Arduino TX to the Bluetooth RX would be on my pin 3. And then the same thing on pin 2 for the RX from the Bluetooth module. So pretty straightforward there. Then we set that up, calling it Bluetooth. So now it's just going to be Bluetooth.print to talk to the module. 
Don't worry about any of these pins here. That's just for the LED and push button. We'll talk about those later. Then right here in setup, we start up that Bluetooth at 9600. Same thing with the hardware UART, also at 9600. Now what's cool about this is if it's not connected, it will accept those AT commands. And AT commands allow you to change parameters within the module. And for this, the only thing I really cared about was changing the name of it, because it comes up by default as like DSD Tech or you know whatever the manufacturer was. And I found a data sheet for this thing here at this link, so you can click that and see some of those AT commands. I don't know if any of them work, but the name one does work, so I renamed it to Kevin's Arduino. And then in the loop, all we do is wait for something to come in to us. So even if it's not connected, which it isn't right now, you see the LED is flashing at us. That means it's not connected. Then I'm going to go ahead over here in the browser and I will connect to it. And you'll see that as soon as I connect to it, the LED turns red there on the module. And then from that point, when it goes and checks Bluetooth, we've got that transparent UART. So any data coming into the module will be read in by this function here, which I was gonna talk about now. I'm not sure if I should or not. It just comes in as a huge string. Um, I think on these modules, the max string length is 20 bytes. So that's why my buffer is set to 20 bytes. And then I go through and decide if it's something to turn the LED on or off and what color the LED should be. But it's all read in right here, parsed out. And uh, if you want me to do a video on string manipulation and parsing and all that kind of stuff, let me know because that could be its own video easily. And it's, again, very useful to know how to do those kinds of things. But then if you push the button, you'll see here, we go and send Bluetooth.print push button. And that's the exact text we would read into the Google Chrome uh, app and print out the button has been pressed. So then over in the processing sketch, this is where the GUI is programmed. And we've got, uh, you notice up here at the top right, it says P5.js. So what you wanna do is go click that, add mode, and then you'll see here P5.js, and you can install that and make sure that's selected. And in this index.html file is where you add your libraries. So you see I've got two added in here. One is the one for P5.ble, which I have the offline files for. And I'm going to zip this whole thing up and make it so uh, available for download in the description below. So it should all just work out of the box. And then also uh, for the DOM objects, which um, create the GUI, the text input, the buttons, that color picker. And I'm just going up to the P5.js because you see right here all the things you can do with that for the GUI. You see you've got check boxes, buttons, sliders, radio buttons. There's the color picker. This would be oh, even a file input, video, audio. So, you know, just a ton of stuff you can do there. But just like Arduino here, we've got our main file. I, it's called Bluetooth GUI. We've got our global setup there. We've got the same kind of thing as Arduino with a setup and draw. Draw is like loop. Setup runs only once. We create our canvas, which is just the whole page of you know the Google Chrome uh, app window. And then we can write to the console too, which is cool. Let me show you that. So when we've got the app running, we can just right click somewhere in there and click inspect. And then just click console right there. So there it is, you see setting up was printed out. And then if I push the button, you see the values printed out there. So then we've got our uh, interface drawn out here and set up. So we've got the, uh, the, but the connect button, of course. So we've created a new button called connect and that's what's gonna be the actual text within that button. And then if we get a mouse press on that button, we're gonna call this function connect to BLE, and I've got its own a tab there just for all the BLE functions, the Bluetooth functions. And we've got a button here for the LED on, LED off, and those functions that are called, which are in commands, you see LED on, LED off. And then there's our uh, the color picker, and then draw, which just calls draw screen on a loop right there, and you can see it's pretty easy if we uh, ever see that it's connected. We make the whole screen go green, and then we put text out there on the screen at this XY position, showing it's connected. If not, we show disconnected, and of course make the screen go red. 
And then I also have this here, text received value, and that's just when I push the button. So if I push that button, you see but push button pressed, and that's the received text right there where I'm drawing it. So this little thing here is just for sending the data down in real time as you're moving the mouse cursor around the color wheel. So it's keeping track of the old value versus the new value sort of as you're moving it around because we don't want to send old data, only new data. And also we have here uh, a timestamp on the last time you sent it. So it has to have been, you know, it had to have been at least 50 milliseconds to send another packet down. And then of course we need to be connected. So that's what this does right here. It's pretty self-explanatory. And I just want to get to the meat of this, which is when you click that connect button, what happens? Because that's really, you know, how you talk to the Bluetooth devices. So when you do click, uh, click that, it calls connect to BLE, which is right here, function, connect to BLE. And this is the stuff, though, that you sort of have to figure out, especially with this module. So you see Bluetooth.connect. This is the service we're going to be looking for uh, as we are scanning. So when you, I'm going to refresh this. So when you click connect here, it's only looking for devices that have this service UUID. So how do you find that? Let me show you. Well, you might get lucky and uh, find it in a data sheet or something, or you could just uh, download an app, some kind of Bluetooth scanner app. So here's light blue, and I see Kevin's Arduino showing up there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And then in that, you'll see the main UUID is FFE0 with then its characteristics, FF, which is only one there, FFE1. And then I'm gonna disconnect from that there and then show you another way here, which is uh, using this app here called Blue C. So I'm gonna go and click on that, connect to it, and you'll see right here, services, FFE0, discovered characteristics for FFE0, FFE1. So you do need to know those things, and some of these modules will actually have two characteristics for the uh, transmit and receive, so they have one for each. So then over here in the processing sketch now, we know what our service UUID is, and there it is, FFE0, and we're gonna go and look only for those devices, and when we connect to it, we're going to discover characteristics and call this function here, got characteristics, which is right below it, right here. Which, by the way, all of this is just example code from the P5BLEJS library. And because we know there's only one characteristic here, you'll see that I'm just going to use the first one. Characteristics, zero. And then that's going to be our main characteristic. And then we're going to start notifications on that, which is how we're going to subscribe to it. As we send data from the Arduino to the Google Chrome app, it's going to be a subscription from the app, and we're going to receive it here on that characteristic. And all that data will be sent to a function called gotValue, and the data type will be a string. And then down here, you'll see right here, gotValue. There's our function for that. We can go ahead. Now we're connected, so we set the is connected is equal to Bluetooth.isConnected, which is going to be true. And then we're going to set a function if we ever disconnect which will be on disconnected, on disconnected, and then down here on disconnected is our function. And all we do is set is connected to false. So pretty straightforward. Here's that got value function. So anytime new data comes in, you can see here, it comes in as a string on the value variable there. And then if value is equal, equal to push button, I set that received value to push button pressed, otherwise blank it out. So that's what we set in the draw screen. So as we're looping through, you see right here, text received value. So that's pretty cool, right? And I'm also printing that to the log. That's why you saw value with the value. We know whatever the data was that was coming in. So that's how we receive data. Now, how do we send data from the Chrome app down to the Bluetooth module? Let me go over to, actually, right here in the Bluetooth tab. You'll see a function I wrote here for send data. So anytime we call this, like from a command, send data, we're going to send LED off with a new line uh, character there. And that 
will allow us at the Arduino side to read in the entire string until we see a new line. So we would get that LED off new line right here comes in. And then I'm going to set it to input value. And this took a little bit of figuring out here because uh, out of the box this library wasn't allowing me to send a full string. So I had to use uh, the text encoder here to build out this array that the uh, the right value uh, method or command here accepts. So I had to encode this command value into this whole thing and now it works great. Okay. So then you Bluetooth characteristic, that same characteristic. Now if you had two characteristics, one for receive, one for transmit, this might be like a TX characteristic dot right value. And then up here, when you're doing your setup here, your start notifications one would be on the Rx characteristic. And you would just have two variables here, like this would be possibly TX characteristic is equal to the first one, Rx characteristic is equal to the second one. Which, by the way, it shows you this in the app, so even if you're not sure, you can run this. So you'll see over here in the console, when you're discovering those characteristics, it'll show you. So here's your array of all the characteristics found. It only found one. So there is zero, and you'll see right in there, so you see in here we've got the UUID for the characteristic, which is FFE1. So the data sheet might say use FFE1 for transmit, use FFE2 for receive. So, you know, that's how you would work this. And even if it failed here, that's fine. You still get this printout for your, your development. So then when you're happy with this whole thing, like I said, it works both offline and online. So you could use it offline. You just point a, uh, a shortcut to wherever your project is to this index.html file, and it'll launch it. So that's what you saw before when I had that little shortcut on the desktop, and I just clicked it. And then there it is, index.html, and that's where the, the project is. Or you could take all of those files, upload them to your server, and then you can have a little web page with this GUI. So there's a lot of cool options here for this kind of thing. There was something that came up that was kind of driving me crazy at first with this. Sometimes you'll see when you go look at this, you'll see like some temp files showing up here. And if you ever have that, you're not going to be able to get this to work when you finally publish the files to a website or the offline. Okay, and I just caused it. So you see this temp right here? Uh, project. So if I go and click on that shortcut again from my desktop, you see we get a blank screen, and that's because of this right here. So what we need to do is get rid of that, and some of the things I've tried is to close out processing, open up this project back again, and then resave it because this is all auto gen stuff right here. All right, and that was a pretty easy fix. All I did was hit play and then stop, and then I came back over here, and now we have all of the regular looking files there. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. Again, if you really want me to uh, elaborate on this code, let me know, and also, if you want to uh, see an entire video dedicated to some of these more advanced uh, C coding things like, uh, you know, string manipulation and parsing and all that kind of stuff, uh, let me know because that could be kind of cool. But that's everything I got in this video, so thanks for watching.